Gatwick, the busiest single runway airport in the world. 25,000 staff, 120,000 bags a day, 33 million passengers a year. Put your bag on first, put the first one on, that would be good. In the past, Gatwick struggled to cope with all the things that can go wrong and do go wrong. Operating an international airport is an unpredictable business. You know, you've got to be on your guard and prepared at all times. But now, Gatwick's under new ownership and undergoing a £1 billion facelift. The aim? To create the best airport in the world. We need to be driving this airport to 45 million passengers uh, off the single runway. Flight control. Check. With new management comes tough talk. We've got to change our business now. We want to remove those failures. There's no accountability, there's no leadership, there's no direction. We don't have time to wait. Put up or shut up. Over the last year, we've been there capturing the highs and the lows as the world's busiest single runway airport gets even busier. Nine Blues crew on route, please move to one side. I need to move you around so you're going down this way for us, please. Conflicting views as to where we're supposed to go, huge queues, nowhere to sit down. Fundamentally, something's wrong. It failed, it's the second time it's failed in a week. You're responsible, yeah. Coming up... This is a really bad airport. Delays are making senior management impatient. Where's the signs? I want to be able to hold it, touch it, lick it if necessary. Oh, my God. I'll be dead. My life won't be worth living. Work's not going to plan in the South Terminal. Get that fill back in again, because they open checking in an hour. You'd have thought all the background checks and everything would have been done rather than get halfway in it and go, oh, can't do it. I have to have it. Today. I can't. And the pressure's getting to the workforce. In terms of a team working together, it when doesn't we, feel like a team. No, but when, when are we going to get a program? The program you're working to is nothing but indicative, and that's now being used as a stick to beat us. Gatwick is a self sufficient community. On any given day, the population of the airport swells to the size of a small city. With two million square feet of floor space and 82 departure gates spread over two terminals, it's not easy to keep the visitors happy. The signage coming into Gatwick, trying to actually find where you're going, does still need some improvement. I came to pick up my daughter some months ago and I was very confused as to where to park. Couldn't find my car afterwards. Gatwick's new management wants to get passenger numbers up by over 30 percent. But to reach this ambitious target, they're going to have to pull their socks up. It's probably when it was built it was great, but now it's just not very well designed for the amount of people who go through it. I'm not really sure what you could do apart from knock it down and build it back again. The new owners are pumping hundreds of millions of pounds into renovating the old terminals. But it isn't just the physical structure that's undergoing change. In terms of who we need to be and what we need to change, more pace, better quality, so deliver. We have some failures right off the end of the graph, and they're the big howlers that create two, two hour queues and so forth. We want to remove those failures for the greater good of the passenger journey. So, put up or shut up. As head of terminals, it's Marcus Stanton's job to ensure construction continues around the passengers. Why have we got tensors here? Why do you think they're there? They're feeling lonely on their own. Can you get them moved? Senior manager Marcus is a tough taskmaster. I probably wouldn't regard myself as a hate figure. I think that's probably a little bit too strong. I think we live in a challenging world. I'm prepared to have some honest and robust conversations and uh, share my views. If the airport's doing its job properly, customers should be happy. Currently, they're not. Mm. Mm. And how would you rate the ease of finding your airline's check-in zone? Um, average. So, were you not finding any signs to it then? No. 
just interested in finding out what you think about the clocks in the airport. Yeah, I haven't actually noticed any clocks. Really, really miserable. Gatwick's overall performance is measured by monthly passenger feedback. Failure to meet targets results in hefty fines. One area that consistently lets the airport down is its sign system. Over the last three years, it's cost Gatwick £1.5 million in compensation to airlines. Responsible for the navigation of human traffic is Julie Ayres. But what was happening here is people really didn't understand that there were toilets. That it looked as though, well, hang on a minute, there are toilets that are meant to be in the shop. Or you've left the sign up when you... Absolutely. Julie joined Gatwick 27 years ago as a graduate trainee. Now she's in charge of signage. It's a really careful balance to make sure that we don't put up too many signs and therefore lead to this sign blindness but we give passengers the information they need at the points they need it. It's winter 2010. As part of its massive investment programme, Gatwick is spending three million pounds to improve how travellers find their way around the airport. We have to make sure that every single passenger finds their way through the terminal effectively. There are 3,000 signs at Gatwick. Now, every single one of them has to be reconsidered. We've got a huge challenge here. You don't need that. What's important is it gives a visual clue for people. They seem to be all a bit unstable, don't they? The, way they've been. the screws are missing from that one, aren't they? So here's a question. Do we need them at all? Julie's feeling the pressure to get it right. And I really hope that we actually achieve that target. Otherwise, I have to get my notice in. <laughs> Don't get that face. <laughs> I'm just thinking, oh my god. Otherwise, I'll be dead. <laughs> my life won't be worth living. All the improvement work at Gatwick is turning some parts of the airport into a building site. So top management have decided that some quickly delivered makeover projects are needed. Former music business supremo John Briley is Gatwick's head of special projects. His role is to jazz up the terminals. Have a look at those up there. That's just wasted space. You could have, um, I don't know, Kings of Leon doing a, you know, an unannounced gig. You could have a fashion show up there. More used to dealing with the likes of Tina Turner and Def Leppard, John's teamed up with concept designer Richard Reed to think outside the box. You know, there's no rule book for an airport. It doesn't have to be a certain way. It ha you know, the only thing that dictates what you do in an airport is someone's imagination. So, excuse the pun, if you let the imagination take off, there is an awful lot you can do here. One of John's main concerns is that Gatwick's missing something fundamental. I have this thing about clocks, because there aren't any clocks. You know, I wake up screaming clocks. I just want to put some clocks in this place. Look, look around, no clocks. Imagine a railway station without clocks. He's lured a group of top creatives all the way to Gatwick in a bid to brainstorm some ideas. I just think it could be quite fun if we got celebrity voices to, yeah. to, to record the it, time. a bit like the, the sat navs. You can create a wall of water and just project the time onto it. It's behind it, it's a time, just changing. We could map things holographically effectively to your iconic clock. On the actual screens at the moment, there's a picture of your control tower. Yeah. So what we thought was, well, hang on, so let's, let, that is a column. Let's take this one step further. Why not create that control tower? We could actually set up a computer screen and we get individuals to actually create their own unique clock. And then arms that come out that are backlit, so it really does stand out. You've got steel with maybe a blue light, which really does, mm. really, is really high impact. With big ideas coming from the meeting room, John thinks he's found the perfect location for his iconic timepiece. You can see the column there. Hang a projector off there and project across onto this wall that you'll see as we go down the steps. Yeah, yeah. OK. Well, let me, uh... But then, you see, it's just ready-made for it, isn't it? It's yeah, just oh, crying it's out for it. Crying out for it. Let's try a few things. All right, we'll fail now and again, but if you don't fail now and again, you're not taking enough chances. And if you don't take chances, you can never be market leader. 
we want to be the, the first Gatwick. We don't want to be the second Heathrow. Gatwick has to compensate airlines over £90,000 each month if passengers get lost on their way to flights. It's Juliet's job as passenger communications manager to sort it out. It's January 2011 and Julie's out with head of airport communications Sam Holgate investigating a letter of complaint from an unhappy passenger. She says that in the lift there is no indication of the level for departures. We got out at level one and after a long walk to the terminals found that we had to go to, to level two. Going up. But whilst discussing one problem... I think this is really confusing. <laughs> ...they discover another. Terminal. Are you okay? You know where you're going? Australia to survive. Right, you need to take some more terms. That's what's really disorientating because I'm assuming I'm at the right No, you're not in the right terminal. We'll just show you. It makes me feel sad and angry, to be quite honest. We need to make sure that the information is clear. Otherwise, we're just open to criticism from passengers, and rightly so. As head of special projects, John Briley takes a keen interest in how the terminals function. The Maverick manager has come up with a way passengers can easily locate check-in while keeping floor space free. It's something that live uh, entertainment learnt years ago, which is PA, PA columns restrict view. You fly it from the ceiling, you can sell every seat in the auditorium. Same here. You imagine if the screens were like Iron Maiden's PA system. How funky would that be? John's working closely with concept designer Richard Reed to sex up Gatwick's appearance. Step one is to reposition some of the existing flight information screens. Ten p.m. Richard needs to move fast to get work completed before check-in opens in the morning. The construction team are ready to go, but they've hit a snag. We're moving this, hopefully, from where it is at the moment to where the guys are over there. But having taken all the uh, tile out and all the screen underneath it, the, uh, all the bolts have, have corroded. So to take it out, we've got to use a grinder, which when you use a grinder, it creates sparks, and you can't create sparks without a hot work permit. Without the required paperwork, Richard's got a big problem on his hands. When terminal team leader Dave Hill arrives and discovers two large holes in his terminal floor, he's far from impressed. The agreement was that came out and that was filled in before they then started digging the holes for the, to where they're moving it to. So I've turned my back for an hour and they've dug holes over there having not put this out. So I'm uh, not happy at the moment. Um, you'd have thought all this sort of background checks and everything would have been done prior to getting the work done rather than get halfway in it and go, oh, can't do it. This doesn't make any sense. Stringent health and safety rules mean that work can't continue. Time's running out for Richard. He goes off to try and sort it out. As time ticks by, Dave's becoming increasingly anxious. Basically, he's now a brick because he shouldn't have let them start over there until this is finished. Oops. I wouldn't have. I would have said, no chance. One job at a time. 2 a.m. And with no sign of Richard, Dave's had enough. I'm going to ask him to get that filled back in again because they open checking in an hour. Speak to Lee now then about it getting filled in now now. There we are, problem solved. Hole has been dug, hole will now be filled in again. Hole will be redug when they're ready. Oh, madness. Richard eventually reappears to discover his plans have been scuppered. 
we've really only had, I guess, four hours, and it's just not enough time to, to get this done. It's a shame, because we probably could have got it done, actually. If we had another two or three hours, we'd have been OK. But that's the way the cookie crumbles. Someone who knows all about airport bureaucracy is head project manager Sheila Kissane. An engineer by trade, she first worked at Gatwick in 1998. While Julie's in charge of the look and positioning of signs, Sheila's responsible for putting them up. Hello, Hello how are you? Yeah, okay. I've got a lot of sort of detailed stuff in there. Okay. In terms of, um, it's a full production schedule, so now the next step is they go back and they survey um, yep. the sign location to finesse the detail behind it. All of Gatwick's 3,000 signs are being replaced. To realise the £2 million initiative, yeah. Sheila's working alongside a big team. Within that team of people, I've got concept designers, as well as detailed designers, the construction guys who will do the builder's work. And it probably does look a bit like overkill, but, you know, if they're taking this floor out, for example, what's underneath it, what sits under that bulkhead, is there concrete beams? So today is just a bit of understanding for them to see the volume of work that we need to do. What, what we'll do is, these guys will come up with, a, with an option of which way to do it, and we'll agree it. When the airport's previous owners left in 2009, they took with them copyright of the signs, which means every single yellow sign with black lettering has to go. It's a massive undertaking. Determined to distance themselves from the previous owners, Gatwick's gone for a somewhat distinctive look. After six months of extensive research and £20,000 worth of consultancy, the new signs are at last revealed. It's out with the old, black type on yellow, and in with the new, yellow type on black. That looks great. That's one good thing about saying new things. On the face of it, it's a few signs, um, but in terms of what works best for the airport and in terms of how much does the passenger pick up when you review these signs and what's too little and what's too much. Now, I think that it's, it could really be a, uh, overlooked in terms of the detail behind it all. Back at the South Terminal, the transition period is causing confusion. Right here, just down there on the end of some of the signs aren't necessarily in place at the moment or there's only half of them up so you know we just try and uh, assist out a bit more where we can and it isn't going down well with some passengers you're all right there sir where are you heading for no i'm far from all right oh dear push my trolley up four flights of stairs yeah, okay. yeah, this, no, you pushed them up the stairs well up the slope oh. yeah. i'm 70 years old and i have to push this up all those slopes. Yep. No lifts. Understand what you're saying. We do have some lifts. There is some more currently being one put in. Yeah, from from, from the car park, and they will and, and it will bring you up. The but road. it's across You've the road. Been promising that for three years. They have. And you, you, that, you're absolutely right. I mean, they are still building it. They are still putting it together. Down on the left zone, Kate. This is a really bad airport. Yeah. And we can only get a little hiccup in Menorca, which really looks after their customers. Now, this won't get published, but there are There you go, sir. Head of terminals, Marcus Stanton, isn't happy either. Put signs up. That, that's it. So we've been from concept to other drawings, to production drawings, to walk around, to sign-offs. Where's the signs? I want to be able to hold it, touch it, lick it if necessary. I want to know when is it actually going up. We're not putting one or two signs up, we're putting over a million pounds worth of new signs up, so it's quite a big project. Until I can physically see it up and notice the difference, I'm not happy. Marcus has got serious pressure coming down on him from top bosses at Gatwick. Is your success and is your target uh, sufficiently challenging um, if you're striving for excellence? It's my action. Tell me now. Don't wait for the meeting. Tell me and then blame me if I don't get it right. Now, look, there's 30 people 
Not long after he was given the new role as head of terminals, Marcus suffered a stroke. Yes, I was ill. I think stress is always a contributory factor to, to any illness of some sort. On tablets for the rest of my life, but, um, you know, just turned 40. <laughs> Old age. <laughs> All 3,000 signs at Gatwick Airport are being replaced. The £3 million project is well underway, but progress is slow. So all this blue here, that goes. We don't do that, though, because we're putting our sign above, yeah? Fine, okay. Head project manager Sheila Kassane is under pressure to deliver. It's her job to get the new signs up. But the schedule is tight. Worried about meeting projected deadlines, Sheila calls a meeting. If you're not getting it today or tomorrow, then... I have to have it. Now. I can't. I haven't got time to do that. But I have to see Marcus for this. Yeah. The intention was that I need the entire programme to see Marcus on Wednesday. So come hell or high water, I need these programmes. I mean, we can't get the detail through because it's yeah. sort of three days of walking around the survey or just to... No one needs to be done in each location. I've only well, just, then I'm I only going got to the terminal only... for another kick-in, aren't I? Quite a tricky situation, really. They're envisaging many weeks of surveying the building, seeing how they fit, and then going into manufacture and then coming to site, which takes them to site in March, and we want them on site yesterday. I have to go to a meeting with my terminal team. They still expect firm dates on a piece of paper, and that's where we end up with a level of conflict. As signage is replaced all over the South Terminal, not all departments are happy with what's going on. Airport chaplain Jonathan Baldwin is upset that signs to the chapel are disappearing. People were just literally getting lost, and people were saying, we can't find you, you know. And I think the theory behind taking them off was, well, if they want a chapel, they'll ask for it. Well, my argument to that is, if they don't know there's one there, they're not going to ask for one. Oh, hang on, Julie. Julie Ayres is in charge of signage and has to explain why some signs are being sacrificed. Great. My colleagues obviously were concerned because... They've seen some of those yeah, being removed. Seen them all go. It might be just worthwhile if we just go out and have a look on the balcony and I can yeah. explain some of the yeah. principles behind some of the wayfinding anyway and then you can see why we did obviously remove some of them. Poor directions and unhappy passengers cost Gatwick over £90,000 in fines every month. It's up to Julie to stop the cash exodus. All we've done is we've really cut back... I know you said you were going to, and I can understand ..all the signing. So we've yeah. really got just kind of... I call them the, the anchor, the yeah. key anchor points, really, for the signage. But the looking down from the concourse is a great opportunity mm. to put something here. So when people are, are down here in that space, yeah they'd be able to see that, and we're not just relying on the prayer symbol. I mean, certainly Jonathan's reaction was one of disappointment, um, and, and that's inevitable. For a large part of this project, there's going to be a huge amount of disappointment. Um, it, it goes with something as emotive as, as wayfinding signage. John Briley's job as head of special projects is to cultivate the passenger experience at Gatwick. Two months after the brainstorming session on clocks for the terminals, he's out gauging public opinion. One of the things we want to do, we're going to put um, a central kind of clock around that pillar there. At Gatwick, I don't know if you've noticed, but there are no clocks anywhere. Yeah, I'm looking at yeah, yeah. In the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Before coming to Gatwick, John worked in the entertainment business. He's got grand ideas. One of the first designs that we looked at was that one. That's meant to look a bit like the control tower here. Um, 
We'll take you through all of them and then you can tell us which one you prefer. Yeah, yeah I think that's lovely. Do you like that yeah, one? I like that. I do. I think this one is more feasible, isn't it? It's more feasible. I like that word. <laughs> that's a good word. What do you think? I think definitely not number one. <laughs> So when you're hoping to go ahead with... Uh... Um, we want to start um, within the month. Excellent. Yeah, because it'll only take a couple of weeks to knock it together. But you see, the beauty of that is that you can do whatever you want with it. I mean, you could actually have it in the middle, you could have some kind of headline at the top, or the temperature here today is... What happens next? I'm going to show it to Paul and to Scott and get them to sign off on it, and then Bob's your auntie. Meanwhile, concept designer Richard Reed's back in the South Terminal after his failed attempt to move one of the electronic information screens. This time, he's determined not to be beaten. That's it. That's it. But you're going to do some hot work soon, aren't you? Yes. How are you cutting it out? Are you cutting it out 